Greetings, Internet Drinking Buddies. My name is Link. The show's name is Tubbin and Chuggin. And on this episode, Will is back, as you can see, and we'll be imbibing some non Kai shochu. Welcome back to the tub, everybody. As you can see, Will is back. You might have seen us on our movie podcast, Deathmatch Cinema. I kind of doubt it, given the view ratings, but hey, you never know. Uh, Will, you've brought a shochu with you this time. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so what I can see, it's it's $25 to $30, typically, uh, at market. Uh, I believe it is an ABV of, I have to check this now, 24 24%. 24%. Um, so shochu, if you're not familiar, is often um, described uh, similarly to shoju or sake. They're actually processed differently. Um, those are clear Asian liquor. They're all the same, right? Yeah. Um, this, I believe, is more sweet potato paste, typically. Correct. Um, it's a very clear drink. Um, Nankai hasn't been around. They don't really have a long legacy. Um, I couldn't tell how long they've been offering this product in North America. Hard to say, uh, but they do come at it from a strong marketing angle at the seltzer kind of brand. Uh, they they advertise the calories up 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 there. Front. Uh, so it's 40 calories per ounce, given that it's 24%, that just translates to 100 calories per drink, which is pretty typical with your seltzers. Yeah, so it's, um, it, if you're into the keto diet, maybe this new drink is for you. Um, but what I can say about it is it's a very clear, uh, not terribly flavor-forward drink. Um, it's possible you could use it in cocktails, but I think it's fairly pleasant on its own. Or even mixed with hot water, that's actually a favorite of um, elderly drinkers for some reason. There is, in fact, an izakaya-style restaurant near me that if you order a soju, they will just give you hot water with it because that's kind of how they expect you to drink it. Um, we're probably going to be drinking it neat just because it's difficult to get hot water that's not tub water. That's not chlorinated? Yeah, um, to, to maintain it for that long. But I think that would be a fairly, well, we'll see how it tastes, but it, it might be a good sort of option to, to add into it. Um, one other thing we should mention is that this one in particular is distilled from sugar cane. Uh, it says right there on the bottle it is 80% cane, 20% rice. So the sweet potato distilling angle doesn't necessarily really mean it showed you, but you know, there's no sugar left in it, as they, they make sure to mention. It is sort of a calorie-focused uh, beverage. Clean, light liquor is what we're going to be going to be targeting here. Go ahead and pour some. Kampai to the ketogenic diet. <laughs> Boy, it hardly tastes like anything. Yeah, I think that's kind of the point. Yeah. When now, I think I don't have a palate for this yet. I haven't had a lot of it, and even at the you know, local Japanese izakaya, where um, we ordered uh, shochu last, I don't think they even told us what brand or manufacturer it was. So I think it's such a, it's a light taste, and it's uncommon enough where um, there aren't really diehards for any particular brand of shochu at this point. Um, but I don't think anyone who had a glass of this who wasn't a drinker or a gin drinker, I think they'd like this. Yeah, this is like a... Uh... You know, if you've ever been to Italy, for example, they'll have, anytime you go to like a local pasta pizza type place, they'll just, they'll have wine, but it's usually you just get whatever the house red or the right. house white is. That's kind of what it's like for shochu. It's just a thing that's really easy to distill yourself. Um, and so I think a lot of homemade stuff kind of exists for it. So having this non-kai one in particular, maybe doesn't give you the best example of what you might find at your local izakaya, but I think it's a, a fairly good assumption that it's gonna taste pretty much the same. Yeah, I think so, though Nankai does make a Nankai Gold product, which is also a shochu, I believe actually distilled from sweet potato. A lot more expensive. Yeah, 60 to 70 dollars a bottle. I don't know, if you're feeling adventurous and you find yourself particularly fond of this beverage, maybe go for that. Yeah. Uh, but, um, hmm. I can't tell the difference, but I assume that's just because I don't know enough about shochus. It's pure, I think is the best word that comes to mind. It just, it tastes almost like spring water. Um, there's a little bit of a something kick in there to tell you it's not water, but it's not much. Yeah. It's a, um, it's lightly sweet. A very lightly sweet. You get that kind of essence of sugar cane they distilled it with. I think there's a little more um, bite 
than uh, your Jinro Soju? Yeah, I think that's probably the, the easiest comparison because Jinro 24, also 24%. I think there's a sort of a marketing or legal thing around if it's above 24%, you need like a, a liquor license to sell right. it versus at 24%, you just need a beer and wine, which right. is a lot easier to get. Correct. So you might see, you know, your local Korean market only has beer and wine because it's easier to get, but they'll still have Soju going up to 24%. Um, Soju, at least Jinro 24, has got more of a kick to it than this, I would say. More of a, a noticeable alcoholic taste to it. I, I disagree, mm. actually. I don't... It's been a while since I've had a Jinro, but I disagree. I think this is a little bit more flavorful Okay. Um, on its own. A Jinro often comes flavored. Yeah. I don't... I mean, I don't think... Both are light. Both are definitely so light. I feel like I'm splitting uh, sugar cane here. Yeah. Is sugar cane thin? I don't actually know. You know? I've never grown sugar cane. I, uh... I took a leap. I don't know if your audience is going to respond to it well, but... You know, uh, let us know in the comments if you like Will's sugar cane joke. Um, yeah. But if not, I would definitely still recommend this guy. I'm having trouble not just downing it as a gulp, to be honest. It's very good. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why I've enjoyed... Um, my pockets work. Excuse me. Oh, no. Um, that's why I've enjoyed uh, doing hot water with it, because it kind of makes you face it like tea. Okay. Frankly, that's a, it's a fairly unique experience I've had in alcohol. I mean, you, you get warm Belgian beers, but you don't normally get something that's like a 150 degrees that warms sure. your heart. That's well, the hot sake. It. Hot sake, I guess that as well. But hot sake is usually, as I mentioned before, you know, it's usually a bottom tier sake that you just eat up, so you can kind of ignore the taste of it. I think this one would shine more on its own. I, I don't actually know if I would add hot water to it. Um, it feels like it would... It's a little lighter that way, for sure. But, uh, I don't know, it's it's like not so much of the edge is cut off that uh, it's not enjoyable that way. I, th I feel like, yeah, maybe uh, a shochu of old was a little bit more, you get a little bit more of that alcoholic taste to it, you add hot water to it, it cuts the edge off, and that's fine. But I think this one is good enough that you could just drink it straight. Maybe that's just me. Um, no, no, I totally agree. I just, I like it both ways. Mm. Mm. Pricing-wise, this one I think is a little bit more expensive. Um, per drink, yeah. I mean, if that's all you're getting into the for. You're getting into like the 250 a drink range, I think, um, given the 24%. I don't know exactly how much the bottle costs, but I think the math I did said it was about 250 a drink. Right. Um, so a little bit more expensive, definitely more expensive than like the seltzers of the world, which try to target that like dollar, dollar fifty oh, range. Yeah. Um, but if you're looking to just have a little bit of something, you know, maybe like three to four ounces worth, almost a wine amount um, to get a few drinks in India, as opposed to having to chug, you know, a couple 12 ounce seltzers. If you're looking for that experience, I think this is a good call. I think this is a little bit of an esoteric experience. I don't think it's just about like, quote unquote partying. Yeah. Like it's like, it's kind of a unique beverage. Um, I feel it's, like it's light enough that you could kind of make it into a seltzer. Um, you could add that kind of lime flavor to it. If you wanted to go that hot water route, for sure. example, you could put a little bit of, you know, lime drop, soda stream, something like that to add some taste to it. It's pretty clean and, and pure on its own. It's pretty neutral. Yeah. I'm sure you could uh, make a vodka cocktail with it and be reasonably happy. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I like this one. Um, as always, let us know. Me, Will, both of us. I'll read the comments. I'll read his comments. Uh, oh, any alcohols you'd like to see us review, if you like the guest dynamic, I do, so I'll probably gonna have a few more of those. Um, but as always, please drink responsibly. Bye-bye.